If you take a microscope to your favorite classic TV program, you'll start discovering all sorts of captivating details and trivia that your average fan is never going to pick up on. From nifty little Easter eggs, eerily familiar set designs, production flubs, and obscure historical references, there are a ton of fun facts you can uncover if you know what you're looking for and how to find them. The process of unearthing these uncanny tidbits can be somewhat tiring, to say the least. The most diehard fans might spend hours combing through each frame of their favorite shows just to find one or two interesting bits of intel. If you don't have time to painstakingly dig through IMDb, Wikipedia, and go through each and every scene of your favorite series from yesteryear, you can let us do the investigative work for you. We're going to show you some of the most obscure bits of classic TV trivia you've ever seen. After you finish watching this video, you're likely to never look at some of these beloved shows the same way again. So buckle up and get ready for a journey into the fantastic and curious hidden world of classic television. Andy Griffith's Upside Down Maps Wait, we thought Mayberry was a sleepy little utopian town in North Carolina. What on earth is a map of Idaho doing behind his desk? And why the heck is it upside down? You'd think the town sheriff would be able to read a map, right? In earlier episodes, you can clearly spot another inverted map at the police department that Barney and Andy call their workplace as well. That upside-down map shows the relationship of Nevada to the state of California. What does it all mean? What would Aunt B think? Is Opie's knowledge of geography going to be permanently stunted? Those are questions we may never know the real answers to. The Brady family's back door is missing something. Ever see someone accidentally run into a glass sliding door? Well, apparently that classic error in judgment never happened on the set of The Brady Bunch, because the blended family's backsliding glass door is missing one crucial element that makes a glass door practical, namely glass. The producers removed the pane of glass from the door to prevent light from reflecting off its surface during filming. So every time Alice slides open the door to tell the children supper is ready, she's really putting in more effort than she needs to. The Charlie's Angels Frank Sinatra Connection Ever wonder where the iconic female crime-busting trio got their nifty name? Aaron Spelling, the series producer, had an office in a building that had previously been used by none other than Frank Sinatra. Behind the desk, proudly displayed on the wall, was a beautiful painting of three angel women. Kate Jackson, who played Sabrina Duncan, was paying a visit to Spelling one afternoon when she saw the painting and suggested the heroic trifecta of lovely ladies be called angels. Initially, they were going to call them Harry's Angels, but there was already a show on the air at the time called Harry O. So, to avoid confusion, they went with Charlie's instead. Gilligan's Island paid their respects to John F. Kennedy. During the final day of production of the Gilligan's Island pilot, which was filmed in November of 63, the news broke that President John F. Kennedy had been assassinated in Texas. The news shocked and rattled the nation, and flags all across the country were lowered to half-mast to pay their respects to the late great leader of the free world. In the opening credits, you can see a tiny little reminder of this tragic bit of American history. As the minnow drifts out of the harbor en route for its ill-fated three-hour tour, you can see a flag in the background at half-mast. Lost in Space's Insanely Expensive Costume Danger, danger, Will Robinson! Robert Kinoshita designed the Robbie the Robot and Tobor costumes for the series that served as popular culture symbols of sorts back in the day. His piece de resistance, however, was the robot B-9. The expensive article of Space Age wardrobe cost $70,000 to produce, which equates to about $450,000 in today's bucks. Bob May, who had previously worked as a body double for Red Buttons, was scouted by Irwin Allen, the lead director for Lost in Space, and told him if he could fit into the costume, he could have the role. He managed to fit into the plastic suit, but just barely. Initially, he would have to operate the lights on the robot suit by pushing a button with his head, but later on the button was relocated to the hand. The Love Boat ticket prices were insane. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, love was in the air. If you wanted to set sail with a cast and crew, you could have, that is if your bank account was flush enough to afford the astronomical ticket price. Travelers wishing to get a chance to take a voyage on the Pacific Princess would have to shell out $3,500 to $8,000 if they wanted to ride with Captain Steubing, Gopher, Julie, and Dr. Bricker. My Three Sons Family Home was a barn in the Gene Autry musical. If you thought that California abode looked familiar, then you were right on the money. This domicile was originally featured in the Gene Autry film Melody Ranch, which premiered in 1940. 
The farmhouse facade was originally a barn, but it was given a suburban makeover in the 50s. The set can be found on the Republic Pictures backlot, which is also home to Gilligan's Lagoon. If you're loving this video so far, make sure you give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And make sure you stick around for the rest of the video to find out the mind-boggling diet that Bamboo Harvester, the equine actor behind Mr. Ed, consumed each day during filming of the classic series that bears his name. The Odd Couple and Penny Marshall's Real Life Family Gary Marshall was the executive producer of The Odd Couple and gave the part of Myrna to his sister Penny, who stuck with the role for four years. In her final appearance on the series, in an episode entitled The Rain in Spain, she gets married to her boyfriend Sheldon, who was played by her husband Rob Reiner. The same episode guest starred some of her real-life family members, including her brother Gary and her sister Ronnie, who respectively played Werner and Verna Turner. William Talman of Perry Mason was fired for violating the terms of his contract. He played Hamilton Berger, a hotshot LA district attorney on the classic courtroom procedural drama. He was briefly fired for violating the terms of the moral clause in his contract when he was arrested following a raid of a party he had attended. He was accused of engaging in lewd activities, but he was eventually acquitted of all charges and was allowed to rejoin the cast. The Out of Time Rifle in the Rifleman the Western series was supposedly set in the late 1870s and 80s, but one prop in particular was wildly out of place. Rancher Lucas McCain's rifle was a Winchester from 1892. The anachronistic prop was equipped with a large ring lever, which allowed left-handed actor Chuck Connors to cock the weapon by spinning it with one hand, a technique that is aptly called spin cocking. NBC thought Spock looked devilish. The Vulcan people should certainly call foul because the network thought that Spock, played by the late, great Leonard Nimoy, looked too satanic to be on the show. Network Brass approached series creator Gene Roddenberry and asked him to nix the pointy-eared character because they feared conservative viewers might find him to be too offensive to their religious sensibilities. Of course, Roddenberry flatly refused, and Spock became one of the most popular characters from the trailblazing science fiction series the one actor to appear in every season of The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone saw many actors and actresses come and go throughout its five seasons, but only one actor can make the claim they appeared in every season. Robert McCord showed up in 67 episodes, although most of those episodes were as an extra. The wife of George Wendt played his wife on Cheers. George Wendt, aka Norm, in the workplace comedy Cheers, got a chance to work with his actual wife during the show's production. Bernadette Burkett played Vera, his wife, who showed up in a half a dozen or so episodes, but in voice only. She only makes an appearance on screen one time throughout the series, in the third season episode Fairy Tales Can Come True, where she can be seen wearing a mask as the character Tinkerbell. WKRP in Cincinnati's Herb Tarlek and the suit made from VW seat covers. Herb consistently wears god-awful tacky suits throughout the show's four seasons. But somewhere out there is a VW that's missing all of its seat covers because one of those garish suits was actually made from the plaid fabric. The Adams family was ahead of their time. They were certainly the only house on the block with a disembodied hand as a resident, and as far as TV is concerned, they were the first family to be seen with their own PC, years before Bruce Wayne got his Bat computer installed in the Bat Cave. The Adams were the proud owners of a Univac computer, an obsolete piece of tech that was invented in 1951. Alfred Hitchcock's Profile Origins The image would live on to become an iconic symbol of the Alfred Hitchcock Hour, a popular anthology series that ran from 1962 to 65. The very minimal side profile sketch was first doodled up for a Christmas card years prior. Irwin Allen's Birthday in 1968's Land of the Giants when the spaceship called Spindrift gets caught in an electrical storm and gets plummeted through space and time only to crash land on June 12, 1983 in the land of giants, that date actually held some special significance to Alan, the show's creator, because it was his birthday. Mr. Ed's Special Diet Bamboo Harvester, the hooved actor behind Mr. Ed, reportedly ate 20 pounds of hay and drank a gallon of sweet tea to wash it all down. Rumor has it peanut butter was also part of his diet, as the sticky substance would cause him to flap his lips, helping to create the illusion of him talking, although other reports cite the use of a string used for the same effect. Perhaps a little of both. 
We could go on for days revealing the secrets of your favorite classic TV shows, but we'll have to save the rest for another video. Which, by the way, if you've enjoyed this one and want to see more, you should give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications to keep up with all our latest content. And let us know in the comments section whether you'd like to learn more fascinating facts about classic TV shows or beloved old school movies.